Corbett Report Radio. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And tonight we're talking to James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com. And uh, we're going to go into FoodWorldOrder.com and the latest in food, health, and environment. So many stories to go over. We'll have to cram it all down our throats, so to speak. But uh, James, before we do, I, in the first half of this broadcast, I was talking about MEK and MKO or whatever you want to call them and terror by proxy. And, uh, of course, this is something that we covered on New World Next Week as well a while ago. So uh, so any thoughts on the whole terror by proxy idea? I think the note that I made back on that New World Next Week episode, which, which again, I just kind of chatted to you. I was like, hey, we, we covered this. It was back in just, just December, so just a couple months ago. Funding terror is, is the title we gave it. And I think I noted on there, as you did here, that the confusion of MEK or MKO – Again, I think probably to the average person who hears their nightly corporate news in the background, it's like, oh, it's all it's just all those terrorists, right? You know, that it's just they know it and hear it and it kind of goes away and it's easily confusing and confusable thing. The other exactly thing. Exactly right. And, and to my mind, that that seems almost like I, I, I don't know if it's planned that way, but it could certainly be used that way. If they do a bad thing, you know, they could be the MKO. If they do a good thing, they could be the MEK <laughs> or vice versa or whatever so that people don't even realize it's the same people. So and that's the level of Orwellian doublespeak we're talking about. But anyway, sorry to derail it. Let's go into the food world order because there's so much to go over tonight. Well, the, I was going to say I also quipped to you there kind of off mic that I find it interesting that it's MK. Oh, that's, you know, they're the ultra terrorist organization. <laughs> Foodworldorder.com is only growing more and more. And uh, I think we have a, a new contributor that's going to write pieces. Actually, I've, I've got a link to it and we'll get to it in the in the binge and purge at the end of a new contributor whose first contribution blew me away. So so I love the support and all the things that, again, James, you and I were basically one-man bands, and we just try and connect and help each other kind of share information and, and maybe a, a helping hand in, in different ways and shapes and forms, like Morgan Lesko of Wiki World Order, who helps host the videos I make out of these appearances on his YouTube channel. And just all those kind of ways we're able to kind of share around, I, th I think, is a, is a great, helpful thing. Absolutely agreed, and hats off to Morgan for doing that. It's uh, it's definitely a big help because, of course, GooTube won't let me upload anything more than 15 minutes, and they probably never will. So I'm glad there are other people out there that can help with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they haven't done it yet, I don't guess they're really going to let us have it. But it, it, it's growing and getting larger, and it's and it's exciting. So there are a lot of things posted, and I think we can kind of touch on all, almost all of them. And, and again, for folks, foodworldorder.com, we can now send out episodes through iTunes. So, again, another thing that is problematic on some levels for, for folks. James, I know you have your iTunes store <laughs> hassles. That Again, that's why we put things out on all these other different ways. And that's why, you know, we'll put New World Next Week up on Blip and on Archive and on YouTube and on your corporate report servers. Because one thing is going to ultimately, you and, know, turn into. I should mention now also on Daily Motion and uh, and Blip on my own Blip 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 TV slash Corbett Report. So it's I all, noticed. Up there I in noticed about six that. Different ways now. I I'd forgotten that as I was grabbing and and linking up your latest videos as I was scrolling through. I did now that you say that subconsciously noticed that I was like, hey, that's a Daily Motion video. <laughs> so we'll just keep using as many different ways as as we can. So needless to say, James, there's a lot posted on foodworldorder.com, but we'll begin with one that we only referenced towards the end of last week's show. And I think the headline we mentioned last week was, you know, studies show animal carcinogen in soft drinks. This story updated pretty quickly, but again, I haven't heard a whole lot about it, you know, beyond just the couple of things I have linked up from Sky News, you know, the phone hacking Murdoch. News Corp operation. Coke and Pepsi to change the recipe to avoid a caramel color cancer warning on their labels. Coca-Cola and Pepsi are changing the recipes for their soft drinks to avoid being forced by law to put a cancer warning on the label. The caramel coloring in the drinks will contain lower levels of 4-methylimosidol, with a Wikipedia link for you to read about that wonderful bit, which has been added to the list of carcinogens in California law. 
Coca-Cola's recipe is being changed across the U.S., but will not be changed in Britain or the rest of Europe. An interesting phenomenon that I'll, I'll, I'll mention here, too, is that it's kind of a trend to get glass bottle Coke and Pepsi from Mexico because they don't have high fructose corn syrup in them. They actually have real sugar in them. So they're kind of a cool, trendy thing to get the glass, you know, Mexican versions of sodas. So they're changing the recipe to avoid, as as many folks out there may have seen on different products or heard it said, you know, like NutraSweet and all that crap. You know, this product is known by, you know, to the state of California to cause cancer and lab rats. So to avoid that, Coke and Pepsi are changing their recipe. So, I, yeah, again, I don't expect to see very much fanfare surrounding that here in the States, but there it is. Yeah, I, I know. I hate to be cynical about every story, but I, I just can't <laughs> help it. I mean, there is, I suppose, something good about this. It will be slightly less cancerous and disgusting and, uh-huh. and terrible for your body, and it will have some slight effect on the overall health of the uh, the vast hordes of zombies out there who continue swilling their coke. But uh, but ultimately, I mean, what is the, the all this does is is in a way type kind of relegitimizes. Oh, look, the government can come in and it can protect the people and it's uh-huh. the savior. When once again, of course, I mean, anyone who's drinking Coca Cola and expecting it to be a healthy drink that doesn't cause cancer and all of these other things probably doesn't quite understand the way this uh, system works. So uh, so to my mind, I mean, what's what's the good of this, really? I mean, it'll it'll be slightly less uh, uh-huh. deadly than before. Well, <laughs> well, and why would thing. you know, why would Coke and Pepsi lie to you? You know, you've been drinking it ever since yeah. the vending machines were in your schools because the schools, you know, didn't have any money by design. So they took on these corporate spot, you know, it's all by design. So, yeah, that's that's the thing. And who can tell me what's nine times seven? Coca-Cola? Partial credit. <laughs> We, I mean, for the most part here, you know, one, we've got our big Berkey water filter. So that's a huge part of, you know, our our drinking, you know, intake. And then, you know, we've, I think we mentioned it on the show, right? We we dumped doing San Pellegrino, nice, you know, fizzy water in the glass bottle from Italy. And we're like, oh, Nestle owns that. So we moved to at least a, a local company, Natural Directions, which is owned by Western Family, which is based in Portland, Oregon. Right. And, and let's be clear for the audience out there. We're not sponsored by anyone. We're not getting any money for any of this. We're Absolutely just telling not. people what we do so that you know that uh, what, what we're doing so that we're not up here on a cloud preaching down to people. No, th- no, thank you. And, and I actually I, I could and should probably do much more, you know, kind of disclaimers on, on my shows and episodes. It's like I'm going to talk about a ton of, you know, references and films and movies and people and food and companies. That doesn't necessarily mean I endorse them. So, yeah, thank you for that caveat. But, you know, we're talking about the water wars, basically, from Coke to thinking, well, okay, well, I'll just drink my own water at home. Nitrate contamination threatens California's drinking water. I, I think it's been said that perhaps the water wars may really be what happens before the the food wars. But from CivilEats.com, they note the Food and Environment Reporting Network, that's the FERN, haha, dot org, the first and only independent nonprofit nonpartisan news organization that blah, 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 they've pushed and published their third report, and I think it's in conjunction with uh, UC Davis, which actually I think is where our friend Morgan Lesko is. And it was first released on MSNBC, but it's called Farming Communities Facing Crisis Over Nitrate Pollution, study says. Reporter takes a deep dive into a new study by UC Davis that reveals that nitrate contamination is severe and getting worse for hundreds of thousands of people in California's farming communities. The most comprehensive assessment so far to date, the report also reveals that agriculture is the main source of 96% of nitrate pollution. James, this, you know, we could break it down or look at it on a number of levels. You could look at it and say, well, ultimately they want to affect and change the way people eat. But you could also look at it and go, well, yeah, it is the factory farming. It is all that land. It is all that feed that it takes to make a cow to make, you know, the little tiny percent that you get back on the end of it being a burger. That is ultimately destructive. But I'm not ready to, you know, 
sign on to any one party line. But even when, you know, you try and step out of one box and stop drinking soda and you want to drink your own water, you realize, like we've discussed again on New World Next Week in our own shows, there's also the drugs and the pharmaceuticals and the rocket fuel and what else? Oh, what else? The uh, fluorosilicic acid, <laughs> oh, aka geez. sodium fluoride, in quotation marks. Oh, that's yeah, see, no. and I even for kind of forget that one. That's because we've kind of <laughs> yeah, known that one so the main long. One. Oh. No, uh, absolutely, and and you include a handy dandy graphic with this uh, post that I hope people will go and take a look at that shows the the sources of nitrate pollution, and of course, what is the vast majority? What is the the, uh, the biggest source of the pollution? It's synthetic fertilizer. And uh, so what do they suggest? Oh, well, if we have this gene revolution and use biotech and GMOs, they won't require as much fertilizer, so it'll be better. And, of course, the exact opposite turns out to be the case. And study after study shows that GMO foods require more fertilizers, not less. So they're just polluting the planet more and more. And now they're polluting the genome itself and trying to play God with it. And uh, we're going to be living with the consequences of that unless we do, as as we've stressed here numerous times, mm. do what we can to try to get off that system and to avoid GMO foods in every way possible. And what is the name of that resource online that people can go to find out if their food is GMO or not? Oh, is it uh, uh, non-GMOproject.org? That's it. Right. Is that, the, is that the address? I don't want to give out the wrong address. But yes. Whatever that is, we'll put a link in. Okay. Episode. <laughs> you you got me on yes, the spot there. Project.org. That's it. Okay. So go there to uh, start checking on some of your food and just don't buy any of the GMO garbage that they want to put in you. So, James, continuing and speaking of dealing with, you know, the consequences of things, just this past Sunday, of course, was the one-year anniversary of Fukushima, which we noted last week, which, of course, you were there, you know, doing ama- amazing work in Osaka last week. But on the anniversary, I posted on Food World Order, uphill struggle for food exporters on Fukushima's first anniversary, and got that from japantimes.co.jp. But it's also, I, I added in a couple other bits related to and, and actually coming from Oregon. So there's one from KTVL, A Night for Japan, a benefit was held in Southern Oregon. And another one from Register Guard, which actually sources back to the New York Times, but they're specifically, explicitly discussing the Oregon coast. A year later, effects of Japan's disaster still unfolds. And James, I know you and I have, you know, time and time again, not only discussed Fukushima, but now we have recently mentioned, of course, awaiting the arrival of, you know, this this toxic debris, perhaps. Uh, yes, it's not a question of if, but when. So um, I guess you on the west coast of the U.S. have that to look forward to. And of course, see, here in Japan, we're not only dealing with the uh, the food supply, which is obviously a huge concern, but also the uh, the debris that's being burnt and scattered around Japan. So it's all part of the fun. You know, that actually reminds me of a sidebar note. I just picked up the latest issue of one of our free local weekly papers, the Portland Mercury, and their cover story is the first four minutes, and it's the breakdown of the upcoming catastrophic Portland earthquake. As they say, the Pacific Northwest, you know, within the next 50 years is due for, you know, their big one. So they use the Fukushima anniversary to kind of lay out this you know, you are there kind of scenario where, you know, in the first few seconds, and they, of course, it's based on studies, you know, about Portland, and they tell us, you know, which bridges will collapse and which things probably won't make it, and it's it's a pretty kind of frightening piece, and and again, it always kind of constantly reminds me, and, and my girlfriend even, and I, even after looking at it, we were like, so again, you know, we kind of reminded each other of like, what's our kind of panic bit, like we're meeting, you know, at X location and then doing this and that, right? Because that's the thing, you know, we can talk and talk and talk about this. And I think my friend Clyde Lewis kind of says this and you're said it in the same kind of way that, you know, gosh, when's the police state going to get here? It's here. We've pretty much seen it. It's it's set up, but it's the where the frog boiling as has been noted quite well. That's it. And and absolutely, your story is one that resonates, obviously, with people here in Japan who are always wondering, well, you know, the big ones uh, do any day now, you know, when's it going to happen? And of course, there was one last year, so it could happen any time. Mm-hmm. And that's why people have to be prepared. And of course, to say, for example, in Japan or in California or in 
Washington to be prepared for a, 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 an earthquake, a, you know, the big one or whatever. That no one would make fun of that, but pr preparing for you know economic collapse. No, oh, then you're a prepper, and uh -huh. oh, we have to make fun of you. So, so it gets spun off into that ridiculous spin. James, I think I can blast through some of the other posts before the end of this segment and we'll get to the binge and purge. But there's a quick bit on, of course, the South by Southwest conference is going on. Food porn goes digital, getting into, of course, you know, the digital sharing of food, which is kind of a fascinating bit. And I've taken pictures. We've taken pictures of some of the great home cooked meals we've made. I don't think I've gone so far as to share them online, but but that is there. And it does have the unfortunate word there of food porn. Um, Eric Schlosser, the author of Fast Food Nation, that the original book, it's 10 years old now. And he wrote a piece that's on the dailybeast.com that basically says, I wish I could tell you I wrote this book and it, you know, everybody, it all changed, but it's only worse. McDonald's only makes even more, you know, it's just, it's, it's gotten more of the same. I've got bits from Reuters about better supplies to drive world food prices in 2012, stories about U.S. scientists warning the EPA about Monsanto corn root worm, and that's from Dawn Magazine, dawn.com. And James, the binge and purge, we can blast through in the final segment if you want. Anything there you want to take or leave? Uh, I'll leave it for now. Why don't we start with the binge and purge and we can finish up after the break. As has been noted here, I think by both of us, we've been adding in more of things from, from around the world of health and the environment. And there has been this story of the curious case of teen ticks in Leroy, New York. The mysterious, or rather the mystery, of 18 twitching teenagers in Leroy. And this is a story I've kind of been interested in from the beginning, and now it involves the real-life Aaron Brockovich and possible chemical weapons and spills and hysteria. The photo that I added, which is interesting, it shows one of the girls suffering from these unexplained ticks that's compared to sort of like a Tourette's, except they also have physical spasms as well. The photo pictures this girl who has black eyes from hitting herself in the face, it's got Fruit Loops and Lucky Charms in the background, kind of giving you the idea. It's like, oh, well, maybe this, you know, maybe she ate too many Lucky Charms, and that's why these girls are all experiencing this. It's just yeah, blame the hysteria. victims. Always blame the victims. Exactly. Yeah. Well, on that note, we will take a short break, and we'll be back to finish up with Food World Order. And also, there's a caller on the line, so we'll go to your call after this. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Vietnamese in Vietnam, Iraq is in a rocky land. We've bombed them all. White phosphorus and napalm too. Bunker busters, daisy cutters. We've bombed them all, friends. We've bombed them all. And of course, by we, we don't mean you and me and the average person out there. We mean the bought and paid for political puppets who are commandeering the governments of the world in the name of the banksters who are really pulling the strings. And that's what it's all about. And tonight we're going over the Food World Order with James Evan Pilato, foodworldorder.com. But we do have one caller on the line, so let's go to him quickly before we finish up with the Binge and Purge. Werner in New Brunswick, good to have you on the program again. What's on your mind tonight? Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, uh, earlier you mentioned about the nitrogen pollution of the uh, drinking water. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there's another uh, uh, aspect that has to be taken into consideration, and that is... Uh, I understand uh, roughly about uh, 20 million barrels of uh, uh, crude oil are being consumed every day in the United States alone. Most of that uh, crude oil is being uh, is being burned, you know, for for fuel in vehicles, home heating, and so on. Now, wherever you got a combustion process, you got the oxidization of atmospheric nitrogen. This is one source of nitrogen pollution that is not being taken into consideration. It certainly is. That's a good point. Anything else? But, and as I say, you know, about uh, agriculture, uh, well, uh, the uh, modern uh, science has been shoved down the farmers whether they want it or not, you know? Unfortunately, and, uh, true. It's trying to get the them on the system. 
Yeah, I hear you. All, All right, right, Werner, thank you so much for the call. All right, James, let's finish up with that binge and purge, foodworldorder.com once again for all of these so you can go into them at more length and depth in your own time. But let's uh, finish up just running down a list of stories here. I think there's so many things there for people to go check out. And we go over things that are, you know, really in the pop culture sphere. There's this new book series and movie called The Hunger Games that I think is a fascinating allegory for what's really going down. There is, again, more about the mysterious, you know, teen ticks in New York, more about the pink slime. I really want to point folks to, again, the new article contribution that is originally at the moment posted on goodbyecanada.blogspot.com from a new contributor to Food World Order. Gut brain manipulation, fertility fear mongering, and it is a fascinating piece. James, there's bits on seed catalogs and so much more. And also on my Twitter feed, using hashtag Food World Order, there's a note about Nature's Path, which is a cereal company that I dig out of Blaine, Washington. They gave $650,000 to the non-GMO project, saying, you know, they're putting their money where their mouth is. So they are a, a member of the non-GMO project that we mentioned earlier. So that and, and so many other things are available on foodworldorder.com and in the media monarchy kingdom at large. Indeed, and I'm uh, intrigued by that headline, Got Camel Milk, but I haven't brought myself to actually look at that story yet. So it maybe actually I'll, I'll muster up the courage. Well, <laughs> it's actually been noted to perhaps help in autistic kids is what it's about. Ooh, well. There you go. I'm, I'm going to check it out. And uh, I understand you have a new mixtape that you might want to let people know about. I do, because it actually does relate to the sort of water situation and, and weaves throughout you know, the story. But it's Media Monarchy Mixtape 15. It's on the top of MediaMonarchy.com. It's called Pacific Lifeline, and I'm an old college radio DJ. So the media and the monarchy, that's, that's what I do. That's what it's about, MediaMonarchy.com and, of course, FoodWorldOrder.com, HolyHexes.com, CyberspaceWar.com. And I hope people tune into New World next week. We've just got our newest episode up in the last few hours here. So once again, plates full, uh, as always. So thank you once again for keeping us abreast of all the food, health, and environment issues. And on that note, we're going to say adieu for another night, but I will be back in 23 hours here on Corbett Report Radio. Thanks again for your time, and until, t- t- until tomorrow night, take care and thanks for listening.